it's Arlen Schweiger, executive editor of CE Pro. I'm here with Ken Bruick, co-founder of Modus VR. Ken, thanks so much for joining me uh, at CE Pro. Thanks for having me, Arlen. So, Ken, uh, you know, I think this should be a pretty fun talk we have uh, today. It's going to include a bit of a bit of a demo uh, to give people, you know, an idea of the Modus experience when it comes to building a room, what you can show over Zoom, uh, fun new features that you've added. Talking all about that. Uh, just to get started here, um, you know, for people who may not be familiar with exactly what Modus VR does, uh, why don't you just, you know, give us a refresher on the company and uh, and where you are today? Sure, sure. So Modus VR is a software platform for designing AV spaces. Uh, it's It was built because of this common problem of AV integrators having a, a tough time communicating the final results that they're going to give. And then especially for these technical projects, helping the end client understand some of those technical details and the why behind them without just inundating the client with jargon. Um, and so a lot of this comes from me being a client and unfortunately becoming a bad client because of I just couldn't see what they were talking about. Uh, we kept thinking, okay, well, why, why aren't people using renders more? Renders are so powerful. And as we looked into it, it just became clear that those tools are too slow and they're not purpose built. They're just these broad, heavy tools, difficult to learn, slow to use, that it really doesn't make sense for the vast majority of projects out there. And so we, we came into this thinking, all right, we need to be able to build a tool that lets people visualize what they're going to get, but do it quickly. And so that's really what sets Modus apart is how fast someone can put together an AV project and present it to a client. Um, and what that does is it lets you bring Modus into the conversation very, very early, about the same time that you would bring in a whiteboard. But now you're communicating in this highly visual, dimensionally accurate medium uh, that really speeds up everything. It, it just shrinks the time of the design and sales process eliminates so much anxiety and contention amongst the stakeholders. And it ends up just being a really fun sales experience for everybody involved. Right. And so for uh, people who don't know exactly the VR part in Modus VR, you're doing these things over, you know, the, the virtual reality, which still that term itself, I think can still, you know, be intimidating for some people. So <laughs> just explain yeah. that, that little part of it for anyone, you know, who maybe has not seen your demo at, at CD Expo or anywhere else, uh, you know, that you've shown the platform, um, just exactly what they can, ex you know, what they can expect with the, the sure. VR yeah. part of it. Well, and, and absolutely. And, and even within our own company and our own offering, VR has, evolved in the way it's leveraged. So when we first uh, entered the market in late 2018, the only way you could use Modus and the only way your clients could participate was in VR. And so the clients had to come into your showroom in most cases, because at the time, the only hardware capable was like a big heavy desktop. So they'd come in, salesperson would put on a headset, client would put on a headset. And I mean, I mean, an actual headset here, and they would be in this shared virtual world. If you've never done VR, it's, it's difficult to describe, but it's powerful. You can, you just have this intuitive sense for how large things are. You you think you're there, for lack of a better term. And, and that is so enlightening to the design discussion. Um, the challenge though, is that's not always practical. And then we also had a pandemic. Uh, which kind of limited the amount of face-to-face -face interaction that was happening, but business didn't stop. Um, but a lot of showrooms did close. And thankfully, the VR technology evolved over time and opened up other opportunities for us. Um, and so now when we talk about Modus VR and the virtual reality element, the client aspect has actually been slowly moving away from the VR piece. Now that's still a, a possibility and we still have lots of our customers, especially those that have been with us for a long time, where that's still the model. They still have a showroom, clients still come in. Um, but what we're finding is it's broadening much more now. And so you still use VR as the tool for creating content. The designer or the salesperson, whoever it is, is still in VR. The primary reasons for that are speed. 
because like, that's our number one challenge we want to solve. But also your first pass on design is better when you're there. When you just intuitively know that's too big or that's too small or this walkway is too narrow. You can just feel that your first pass on design is better. Um, but on the client side, we've opened it up quite a bit now so that there are other tools available um, during during the design phase, they can participate over Zoom or Teams like we're going to show today. Um, but then also we've added a lot in terms of generating deliverables once the project proposal is complete. So generating renders or 360s or line drawings or bill of materials, all those things now feed off of that original design done in VR. Sure. And what we wanted to do was uh, give integrators an idea of you know, what they can expect with the new Modus as a service that was recently rolled out. And so Ken, tell us a bit more about, you know, what led to that. And when we're talking about it on the client side, you know, we are talking about this kind of expanded integration where, you know, like we said, I, I can be looking at these things over Zoom or Teams and see what, you know, might happen to my room if it was something that I wanted to have done. And so we're going to give kind of a scenario like that. But you know, Modus as a service, um, what are some of the details there that, you know, should really um, be kind of attractive uh, for integrators to look into when they're, you know, looking at designing these rooms? Yeah, so Modus as a service at its core is an opportunity for integrators to take advantage of all the benefits that Modus provides, all of the speed, the visualization, getting stake stakeholders aligned, that's all still there. But now someone that's not even a Modus subscriber can come in and reap those benefits. And so the way it works is we're the ones that are doing everything. We're the ones that are running the hardware. We're using the software. So from an integrator standpoint, there's really only three things that they're involved in. One is the initial information gathering, room dimensions, project goals, what they want the project to be like. Um, they send that off to us. And then we'll host a couple of meetings. That's step two. And that's going to be what we're going to see today. These live workshops that are happening remotely anywhere in the world where we are interactively talking through this room and working the problem. We'll do two of those. Sometimes the end client's involved. Sometimes they're not. That's really up to the integrator. And then the third step is the deliverables where we'll uh, output the same package of deliverables that we do for everything else. Those images, line drawings, 360s, and a bill of materials. Um, and that's it. So an integrator can come in and focus really on what they care about. They just want to sell equipment and their services, right? And they want to provide a good service. And then we take care of everything else. So they can, and the, the other great part about this is we've seen in the Cedia channel, integrators have often struggled to charge for their design time, right? That's a really common challenge. A lot of them don't know how to do it or they are competing against their client's nephew who also just happens to like speakers and TVs, right? And so the integrator's expertise, unfortunately, has been devalued by a lot of consumers, which is a shame. Modus as a service gives them an opportunity to uh, offer something uniquely valuable that they can't get anywhere else. Um, and so those clients can appreciate this. It's easily line itemed. And it, it makes the entire process go better. So it's kind of a win for everybody involved. Great. Well, we wanted to um, show that in action and, and kind of talk about a, a win. Uh, you know, you had um, told me a little bit before we started you know, re recording here about a design project uh, that uh, you were helping out a friend of yours on. Uh, and it was sort of really kind of exemplified you know, why you developed Modus VR because they were, you know, uh, looking at doing a media room, couldn't envision uh, what to do with it. And so you kind of stepped in here. So we're going to pretend that uh, I guess I can be your your friend that you were designing this room for and, and providing the service. Friend, and yeah. you, uh, you know, would be the integrator and saying, hey, okay, you're a client. You've come in and, you know, you have a space that you want us to deal with. You're not really sure what to do. You're going to have a blank room, and you know, here's what we can provide for you, so that uh, you know everyone in the household is happy with what you come up with. Yeah, and and to set the stage a little bit more, 
uh, this is a little bit of a unique scenario. We're we're not offering Modus or Modus as a service direct to consumer, right? This is only through the integration channel. Um, we're not trying to be the technology experts. We are the rendering and visualization and discussion experts, uh, which is a key part here because the the value the integrator brings to the table is not the brands they sell, right? Hopefully they stand behind the brands they sell, but what they're bringing is their expertise. And Modus, and by extension, Modus as a service, is just another way to help them shine and help them show that expertise. So this, this example is convenient because uh, I don't need to get permission from an integrator to share this project, but this is definitely a little bit out of the ordinary. And we're probably going to see some people in the audience go, yeah, Ken is not a great integrator, but I'm not, I'm a software guy. So with that said, what I'll do is I'll, I'll, I'll first switch over here and we can see uh, this empty space. And so the backstory here is a, a friend of mine is in the process of finishing his basement. He wanted to put in a nice media area. He actually talks about it like a home theater, but it's really more of a media room. It's not a dedicated space. And Multi-purpose. The, so there's going to be more, yeah, there's going to be more yeah, going on yeah. there than just movie watching. And and that's what they need. They really need a multi-purpose space. He talks sure. about it like a home theater, but they they want to entertain. They want to do sports. Yeah. It, it's a media, media room. Uh, and and as he, he called me up asking just for advice on how big of a screen should I put in? And as we were talking, he started saying all these phrases that we're all familiar with. Well, I want this. My wife thinks she wants this. I, I think we should do this. My wife disagrees, right? And, and really what became apparent was they were arguing based on their imaginations. I imagine this is not going to look good. I imagine this is. And they were imagining it differently. And I said, oh, okay, his, his name's Danny. I said, all right, Danny, let's just, let's do this right. Well, let's bring in Demotus. So the very first step here is I, I had him send me all the dimensions and he had already told me their project goals. So we'll start there. I'm just going to spend a minute here kind of showing the basic room and I'll talk through a little bit about what they asked for. And so this is a really simple space. Um, but what's interesting about it is it's also very small. So it, basically they're coming down the stairs here and we didn't model that. It's just kind of this black void because it's not important to the conversation, but they come around and it's a it's an older home and you'll usually the dead giveaway are these tiny windows. But an important point here is this ceiling is seven foot nine inches. And that's gonna play a, a pretty critical role here moving forward as we talk about some of their design goals. Um, but in this space, what the husband wanted was a projection screen, a five, at least a five one surround sound system and tiered seating, um, which was kind of throwing up all sorts of alarm bells for me, but he just insisted that it would work. Uh, and I said, okay, okay. And I, I kept listening to him. Um, and as an aside, this is the experience when we talk about our live workshops or our live design sessions. This is what it's like. You're getting an, a, not just a render, but an interactive render. You can see what's happening on the fly. Now, what I'll do is I'll fast forward just a little bit here, and I'm going to show you what he actually asked for. Okay, so this right here, and I'll move your camera back. Um, this is essentially what he asked for, and this is an important step for him. Uh, he, he's Hopefully, he'll never watch this video. He's kind of a headstrong guy. Um, and it was really difficult to talk him out of this. And that was really what his wife had been struggling with as well. She had some differing opinions and, and it was just, she wasn't getting anywhere. Um, and, I, and so I said, okay, well, it's, it's worth it for me to take a few minutes to show you what you're asking for and why I think it's going to be a challenge. So I'll just kind of walk you through this a little bit here. And is this video coming through all right, Arlen? Yeah, that's fine. So okay. again, this is Perfect. something he... He'd seen photos of theaters and kind of had an idea of of something yeah. like he's you know saying, "Hey, put in a riser there," uh, yeah. <laughs> but perhaps not realizing that you know your ceiling's too low and the you know the projector is going to be coming down and yeah, there's one of the challenges. But yeah, Ken, go ahead and walk all, us through all sorts of issues. Um, and then the other and and he had wanted the projector on this wall. Um, I'm going to back up here. He he really wanted it on this wall. And you may remember there is a window back there. Um, and I said, hey, there's there's a window there. Do you really want to cover that? He said, I don't care. 
I said, you know, he's like, I don't care about code. It's a window so small. We're never going to want it. I said, okay, well, that's, that's going to be an issue. We might have some light bleeding through into your screen, but we'll, we'll tackle that later. There's solutions for that. Um, but let's just talk about their performance. Cause that's what he cared most about was the performance of the system, just the usability of the system. So when we come in here to have this riser be an appropriate height, we also need to have a step. And all of a sudden, the whole room just starts fighting you. And it becomes this kind of a puzzle, right? Where, okay, we want to have the projection screen centered on the wall. And then we want to have the couches centered on that. We end up this weird scenario where we've got a step that's sticking out right here as you're coming around the corner. So we've got a tripping hazard. That's not great, especially in a room that's meant to be dark. Um, but now this, these two rows of seating, we don't have enough room. So we definitely can't do recliners in the back, which is fine because they only wanted a couch. Um, but in order to do these two rows, this front couch, for example, isn't even five feet away from the screen. So that means our poor people that are sitting in the front are at a 63 and above degree viewing angle to that screen. That is yeah, just that's, that, way, that's not the uh, way commercial. Too tight. That's not the commercial <laughs> cinema experience that they want in their home of being in that first row. No, no, it's not. Um, so already it's it's not a great visual experience. Um, they wanted a projector so that they could go large, but they didn't really have a budget to do any crazy lenses or an ultra short throw projector. And so 110 was about as big as they could get at that distance because we're dealing with the shorter part of the room here. So already the, the grandeur of a big screen is a little bit lost. Um, but then when it comes to the sound, this is the other issue that they hadn't really considered. There's no breathing room in the back. And so these poor people that are sitting in this couch now are sitting right next to a speaker. And so they're, all they're going to hear is this left channel, this left rear channel right here, or this right rear channel when they're sitting there. Um, and then finally, as we, as we talk more about the things that his wife cared about, we start to see there's a really inefficient use of space because everything has to be centered this way. We just have this large uh, five foot gap here where you can't really do much. You can't add additional seating because the riser messes that up and we're way off angle. Um, and we end up having the same thing over on the left side too. And so when, this was an important investment of time. This probably took me maybe five minutes to throw this together to help illustrate what was going on with this room. But it was important because now that he could see it, I was able to de-escalate the situation with his wife. It became less about I'm right and more about, okay, what's right? And it opened the door to that conversation. So from there, we just started fresh. We said, okay, well, what, what's the best thing to do here? Right. And so, Ken, just to reiterate, this is something now that you were able to do with them on the fly over Zoom, just like you're doing, you're showing me here yep. right now. Absolutely. Just yeah, getting, and, and, you know, you're, you're getting rid of those objects, you're moving things yep. around. Yeah. And so usually in, in, in most cases, what's happening is you're coming to the table with one or two, or maybe even three different proposals, just, just like you would with a normal traditional proposal, right? You've, you've done a needs analysis, you understand the client's budget and their goals, and you're saying, okay, I, you know, we could do this at this price range, this at this price range, and this at this price range. Let's talk. Um, the challenge with that approach, though, is the client is spending a lot of their energy imagining and quite frankly, sifting through jargon and details that don't matter, right? A lot of times those proposals will tell you, hey, it includes a 20 foot HDMI 2.1 cable from this brand. And it's like, I, uh, the client doesn't care at that point. Um, and what do they end up focusing on is just the price. Uh, whereas with Modus, you can have that discussion and now the client isn't spending so much energy, energy trying to translate what you're saying. Instead, you're just showing them. And just like, as I was walking my friend through the challenges with the design he wanted, we can also walk through the benefits of the designs that we're going to introduce. And so normally you wouldn't do all of this live. Normally you would come with ideas, you know, you'd have them ready, but then because things are so fast, you can still react on the fly. And so that's where a lot of the power comes in here because now 
as you're talking with the client and they have an idea or a concern, you can say, well, yeah, well, let's just see what happens if we change that projection screen to right. a, a TV and maybe they love it. Maybe they don't. Maybe they want a second TV over here. You know, maybe it triggers some fun idea. And then that's where the magic starts to happen. Not only do they have a great experience, but you're actually going to collapse weeks, sometimes even months of back and forth into a single meeting that they're going to love. And they come out of it on the same page as you. You all saw the same thing. You agreed on the same thing. And then, of course, when it's over, we can send out those deliverables I've been referring to as kind of meeting notes. Oh, yeah, we did switch to a TV in the end, didn't we? Oh, we did reorient the room. Yeah. And it's it's so great. Um, but in this case, what I might try and do just for fun here is kind of end up with a different design altogether, but just do this live. We might edit some of this after the fact to make it a little bit faster. Um, but what was interesting about this case is as I was talking to them, I'm going to move you guys around here for a sec. As I was talking to them, I realized children were a really big part of how they see themselves using this space. Um, children and snacks. <laughs> and then, and children, snacks, carpets, and risers all kind of work against each other. And so we we had this idea, well, what if we put a bar in the back? And, and we ditched the riser. We put a bar in the back. And instead of the whole thing being carpeted, what if we did kind of a wood floor? And so this does a couple of things. We still get kind of two rows of seating in the end. Um, because we've got this row in the back. But on top of that now... We have a clean area. You can kind of quarantine the children to the back where they're going to make a mess, where it's easier to clean up. Great. And then in the front of the room, instead of it, because they also wanted to fit more people, typically it was just kids, but they also wanted to fit more people. Um, so maybe instead of two couches, we instead do like a big sectional. Right. Um, okay. So we, and that's that right there, that space is now going toward the uh, where they walk in. Yeah, so the clean space, the wooden, you know, wood floor space. Yeah, so I'll, I'll kind of navigate you around right, here okay. a little bit, right? So this is where they walk in. Behind me is the stairwell. And so this is the orientation we had before. So before the screen was on this wall, which introduced right. a lot of problems. We ended up with a lot of wasted space, but already you can see we're able to fit in roughly the same number of people, but this room is now being purpose-built for their needs which they didn't even realize. <laughs> they didn't even realize some of their needs. Um, but we can come in and we can toss in some, we'll bring in some stools here. Uh, just something a little bit nicer looking. Uh, do a few of these. Just toss those in, see how they feel about that idea. And now we've got this great place. The kids can come in. Uh, this can also double as like a homework zone or... You know, husband wants to be on his laptop, wife wants to watch rom-com, something like that. They can use the space a little bit more effectively. A little bit more effectively is a little bit better of an entertainment space. Um, and and so this is on a on a you know at a glance would be kind of a difficult pitch for them based on where things were starting off. Um, but pretty quickly we're able to pitch something that they could both agree on. And this is exactly what happened with them. Uh, we talked through this. I made a pitch for a little bit simpler of a setup, but it was it was more appropriate for their needs. Um, I think we ended up going a little bit bigger on the screen. I think we did 86. Um, we did a nice. And did you go from projection to flat panel? Or we it... did, we did. And and part of that challenge was when you were on that back riser, you know, if you stood up, you'd clock your head on the projector, and it just didn't make any sense. Um, this way, we still do get some natural light. You do have a fire escape. They, If they wanted to, they could go back to the projector. They could mount the projector right above this bar here and get a larger throw. So they could still end up with that idea. But as we talked about it with kids and everything, they actually realized a projector screen was going to be a little bit too low and it was a little bit too close to reach for some of the little ones running around. Um, and so they ended up going with this example. And then, of course, we can bring in like a subwoofer over here in the corner. 
and we're getting pretty close. And this only took a couple of minutes. Um, right. But then what, and so that's what you yeah. told me that you had that kind of follow up conversation that you were mentioning before, where an, an integrator can bring a few ideas to the table, come into that meeting all set and ready to go and have things just, you know, done blazing fast. Yep. <laughs> basically, to, to switch and, and, and do any changes where now they might look at that and say, you know, like you were doing before, hey, can we do part of that as a wooden floor? Yeah. Oh, sure. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, and so one of the other things that came up um, was equipment. Where does it go? And they also have this area under the stairs. And so one of the things that we ended up talking about was, you know, we could have the equipment here, but again, then it's exposed to the kids. We've got this great spot under the stairs. Why don't we just put it in a rack and have it recessed into the wall? And it was a great idea that they, it really resonated with them and their needs. Um, and so that's what we ended up doing. And they, they only needed a small rack. It wasn't a lot of equipment. Um, and it, it really tied everything together, kept the equipment safe uh, and tied everything up nicely. I'm trying to, there we go. They did not need a rack this big. <laughs> we did something nice and small. We just dropped it into the wall, recessed it. It was nice and clean, looked slick. Um, and then if I remember right, in the end, they also had some like bookshelves or something. But if we kind of take a step back here and, and think through some of their initial goals, we have checked every single box. We've done it quickly. We got husband and wife on the same page. We diffused the situation, right? <laughs> Which sure. is unfortunately uh, sometimes our job in this industry. Uh, but we ended up with something that is much more appropriate to what they needed. And and look how much more efficiently we're using this space. It doesn't feel tight, but it's far better. We don't have any of those awkward spaces that we had before. It's a high performance system. Um, I guess we still need to drop in some speakers in the sides. If we were to turn on our Dolby stuff, we'd probably be right, tossing give it a little right bit of surround there. sound. Yeah. And then, as you said, uh, with doing something like this, now the dealer also has these design services that he can charge for, uh, and, you know, and, and make use of that value that he's providing, where he's taking this time, especially he's done the research, he's took that time previously to kind of set things up, and now he's showing them and, and you know, he can basically get, um, you know, compensation for all of that hard work and, and Modus can help out with something like that. Yeah. I mean, if the, the hard part for the end consumer here is th there's very little way for them to appreciate the engineering that goes into even a room like this, right? The, uh, an experienced integrator can do a lot of this really quickly, but if the end result is, oh yeah, we're just going to buy you seven to 11 speakers and a subwoofer and a screen and amplification. Like these are all pieces and parts that a lot of consumers are already familiar with, but they don't appreciate the selection and design process. Right. And, and it's really right. difficult to communicate that. Um, and, and so instead what Modus helps do is it helps say, look, yeah, yes, your nephew can go on Amazon and put together a shopping cart for you. Yes. But your, your nephew does not have the experience and the expertise and Modus can help reinforce that. It can help show that. And so typically, as we're talking about a Modus as a service engagement, where the integrator is the one that is leading the charge and owning the meeting, in those meetings, usually my team is not the ones doing all the talking. We You can think of it as more like a puppet. Um, and so Arlen, if you were the integrator in this case, you'd be saying, hey, Ken, you know, what if we did change that to a projection screen? Or what if you know, can you show me what it would look like if we're sitting uh, in the in the couch there? What's that view like? And you're guiding the meeting. It is your meeting. It is your flavor. It is your expertise. And we're just helping to paint that picture. But absolutely, right. we we want all of our, uh, both our subscribers and our Modus as a service uh, customers to be charging for it because there's so much value here. And it's such a differentiator and, and they should be charging for their time. We want them to. Okay, Ken. So now let's take it. You've done the workshop. Uh, where do you proceed from there? You talked about the deliverables from before. 
Uh, what kind of are the next steps for integrators once they're set with all that presentation? Yeah, yeah, because you you deliver this um, amazing experience to the client. They're on fire. They're excited about it. Now what? Um, and that's where it, our companion applications come into play. And these are some of the things that were introduced uh, in 2020 and 2021. Uh, as as well as 2022, actually, we've been moving pretty quickly. Um, these are all the things that help answer that question. So I, I'm actually going to switch over and share my screen again. Um, now, what you're seeing here is what we call the the launcher. This is where you're doing your project management. This is where I would launch into VR. But I can also go into a couple of other applications. One of those is called Modus Photo. So while that loads, if you think of Modus VR is the tool for building and presenting. Modus Photo is a tool for generating deliverables. And so this is going to look an awful lot like what you just saw, but you'll notice the lighting's a little bit better quality. And this is a version of the room that I had touched up beforehand. I've added some recessed lighting. I had a little bit of artwork in the back of the room. I finished adding those rear speakers. Um, but what we're going to be able to do with Modus Photo is two things, and we can do it really fast. And again, that's the whole key here is how fast you can do these things. But the first thing we'll do is we'll generate a few renders. And renders are, are still powerful because you can email these out, you can include them in an official proposal, you can use them for marketing. Right? There's all sorts of different benefits to these. And that's where Modus Photo comes into play. So I've got some really simple controls here for uh, kind of setting things up how I want. Uh, Modus is not a lighting design tool, but we do have some basic things to help set the mood. Um, but let's say this is how we want our shot. Maybe we want it a little bit more dramatic and we want this bar to be out of focus here. We can just drag that slider down. If we're happy with the shot, I just push enter. And in the bottom left corner, you get a thumbnail there. So maybe we wanted to do just a few different images of the finished proposal. Great. Now I have these as just regular, regular old images. I can do whatever I want with. Um, but the other fun thing you can do here, and, and clients get a real kick out of these, is generate a 360. Um, that's another hotkey. Takes a couple of seconds. When it's done, um, we do a bunch of processing on the back end. We then throw it up to the internet, and now this is a web shareable 360 view of the room. So if I back out a Modus photo, I can show you this. And we'll I, hopefully we can paste a link to this um, in the article here. When you're done, you've got this great little interactive thing. You can pull this up on a phone, you can embed it in a website. Uh, and clients really love these because now they get to be behind the wheel. They can look around the room how they want. And it's something that they can then share with their friends. Um, this one has our logo embedded on it, but of course you can do, you can customize that to be your own logo. Um, so that's Modus Photo. The, the second one is Modus Docs. And so with Modus Docs, you can generate line drawings. And then at, uh, earlier this year, we launched a bill of materials generation. I, I won't go through the bill of materials because it's, uh, it's a spreadsheet when you're done. So it's not that exciting. Um, but line drawings are great because now you can come in and very quickly throw together these line drawings. Um, you can add dimension lines, you can annotate them, and it also only takes minutes. And then when you're done, you can spit that out as a multi-page PDF that you can send to your customers um, if, if needed. But all those deliverables really just help you up your game, do your thing faster. Uh, some of them you may share with clients, some of them you may just share with your install techs. But what makes this so unique and so powerful is how fast it is, right? Normally to get this level of, of uh, deliverables, you'd have to be looking at at least a six-figure project where these things are fast enough, you can, you can justify it for just about any project. And, and, and when you can do that, everybody wins, right? The client is happier. The salespeople are happier. They're moving faster. They're typically selling more. But then also once everything's done, you have fewer callbacks. You don't have the client saying, oh, this ended up a little bit different than what I was thinking. What would it take to do a different screen size, right? How many integrators have had to just eat that cost and hopefully resell that screen? It, all of those things are minimized uh, when you're bringing in Modus. 
Right. And like you said, it just it cuts down on the back and forth time. Integrators can, you know, they can upsell on the spot if they want, right, you know, as they're going. So it's really a, you know, a lot, um, a lot of possibilities out there for dealers who want to do it. And, you know, with that, Ken, thank you so much for giving us a, a run through of, of all the capabilities. It's a, you know, really fun uh, software to see and just, you know, the, the amount of capabilities and the features added for it. Uh, make it a real value play, it seems like, for integrators these days and especially with their uh, with their customers. So, you know, on that note, Ken, thank you so much. Uh, and we really appreciate the time. And we look forward to some more follow-ups uh, about some specific projects as well and how integrators are, are taking advantage of all those benefits. Now, thanks so much, Arlen.